So just quickly, um, my name is Hanley. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I just graduated from college. Yay. Uh, I st studied biochemistry and molecular biology, and I'm associated with Ohio State Christians on campus. Um, so today, uh, I'll just be uh, getting into a parable in Matthew chapter 18. Uh, and like Tyler discussed, it's on forgiving others' debts towards us. So I think I'll just get right into it. Uh, Eric, could you pull up uh, uh, Matthew chapter 18? Verse 21 for us. Yeah, thank you. So in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, uh, we have here Peter. So a, a disciple Peter, and he uh, comes and asks the Lord. He says to the Lord, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. So clearly uh, here you have Peter. Peter is clearly troubled and kind of disturbed uh, because he, he, he knows in his heart there's, you know, this one brother. There's, this, there's some brother who, you know, has really uh, troubling him, you know, who he's having a hard time, you know, being with, dealing with, and, and you know, even a brother who sinned against him. And the Lord uh, tells, tells Peter in verse 22, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but actually up to 70 times seven. So the Lord's word here, uh, it's quite serious. Um, the Lord's word uh, implies that, you know, we need to forgive our fellow brothers and sisters over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Basically, we need to forgive them unlimitedly. We need to continuously forgive our brothers and sisters. Um, so basically, this is kind of the context for, uh, the, the, for this entire parable. It's, Peter is concerned about... Um, this problem that he has with his brother. His brother has, you know, wronged him. And so the Lord, uh, in the next verses from verse 23 through 35, the Lord, you know, uh, brings forth this parable. Okay, so in verse 23, the Lord says, For this reason, the kingdom of the heavens has become like a king who desired to settle accounts with his slaves. Verse 24. And when he began to settle them, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, 25. But since he did not have the means to repay, that is, the slave did not have the means to repay, the master commanded him to be sold, as well as his wife and children and all that he had and, pay, and repayment to be made. Then the slave fell down and worshipped him, saying, Be patient with me, and I will repay you all. And the master of that slave was moved with compassion. Oh, he was moved with compassion and released him and forgave him the loan. So, you know, in this slave, just to uh, make things clear, the slave here actually doesn't refer to unbelievers, but the slave refers to us believers, okay? Because only believers are slaves to Christ. Only believers are slaves to God. Only believers serve God, okay? Um, and the king here in verse 23, uh, the king is, is the Lord, of course. Uh, the Lord is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. And then we have this slave, okay, who owes 10,000 talents to the king. So you may ask, then, what are these 10,000 talents if they don't refer to our, our, our failures and sins before we were saved? So these 10,000 talents that we owe before the Lord today are, you know, all of our shortcomings, all of our failures, all of our, you know, just the ways in which, you know, we don't match the Lord. The ways, you know, our shortcomings before the Lord. You know, we have so many shortcomings before the Lord. These are the 10,000 talents of debt. But then in verse 27, the master, he forgives his slave. He forgives the slave with 10,000 talents of debt. And, and what is that? Um, that is just like the Lord today. The Lord today, even though we have so many failures, mistakes, shortcomings before the Lord, yet the Lord is still lenient with us. The Lord is still patient with us. The Lord forgives us again and again for all the times we make mistakes before him, for all the times we don't live up to his standards, for all the times in which we fail him. He still loves us. He's still merciful to us, and he still forgives us. Okay? So then I'm going to go on. Uh, I'll read the next uh, four verses, 20, sorry, three verses, 28 through 30. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he took hold of him and began to choke him, saying, Repay me what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and begged him, saying, Be patient with me, and I will repay you. But he would not, 
Instead, he went away and threw him, threw his fellow slave into prison until he would repay what was owed. You know, I, I was really touched by these, the first five words of verse 28. But that slave went out. It's like that slave totally forgot about all of his master's mercy, all of his master's compassion, all of his master's forgiveness. And that slave went out. He found one of his fellow slaves, okay? He found one of, this is like us uh, finding, you know, a fellow brother or sister, one of our fellow slaves. And, 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 he, and he demanded that slave to repay him a hundred denarii. Okay, like a hundred denarii uh, for reference is, okay, so one talent is 6,000 denarii. One talent is 6,000 denarii. We owe the Lord 10,000 talents, 10,000 talents. But this slave, he went out and he choked another slave for 100 denarii, which, 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 was, owed, which, which, which was owed to him. You know, uh, it's not just the slave that, the, you know, this thing is limited to. Actually, sometimes we a- we're actually just like this, you know. I can testify to that fact. You know, uh, in fact, the other day, <laughs> I was, I was at home, I was cleaning something at home. I was cleaning a window and you know, my dad, uh, who's also a, a dear believer, a dear brother in the Lord, you know, he's not just my dad, but he's, he's a brother in the church. Um, and he, you know, he told me to use a different kind of solution to clean uh, the window. <laughs> but actually he said it in a tone that really bothered me, really, really bothered me. And although at that time I didn't, I didn't lose my temper with him. I didn't s- talk back to him, but you know, in my heart, I was, I was inwardly, I was so bitter. I was so annoyed. I was like, ah, I was like, why'd you have to say something like that? Like, come on, you know? And, you know, inwardly, really, I was like, I was choking him in my heart. I was like choking my dad, you know, I, like, and, you know, and also it's not, not just, not just that one time, but, you know, uh, a couple, this past year, I lived with a other group of brothers in an apartment. And sometimes these brothers would do things that, you know, got on my nerves a lot. <laughs> For example, sometimes, you know, these brothers, you know, would, would, would leave the door open. I told them several times, I was like, hey, brothers, you know, close the doors. And, and I, was, I was angry with them. I, got, I, got, I was annoyed. You know, we're, we're really just like this. We get upset over other people, with other people, brothers in the church, our family members, over just little things, little things, a hundred denarii, okay? But brothers and sisters, we need to learn to let go of these hundred denarii. Okay, we need to learn that, that, that we can't choke our brothers and sisters inwardly in our hearts. Okay, we have to let these go. Just, just for the sake of, you know, we're all children of God. We're all fellow brothers and sisters. We're all, we all live in the family of God. And, and we have to realize that we're, also, we're all sinners too. You know, we all make mistakes. We're not perfect. We're not the Lord Jesus. We're still sinners living in the flesh, living in, in this, you know, in our fallen condition, we make mistakes towards one another. So we need to be forgiving towards one another because we're all the family. We're all the family of God. We're all, you know, we're all with one another. We're all God's family. And, you know, in the, in, in this parable, it was shared in a specific context too. In Matthew chapter 18, the Lord commanded his disciples, told his disciples that you need to pray in harmony with one another. Okay. Okay. The Lord said, you, where there are two or three gathered, there I am in their midst. And wherever there are two or three of you in harmony together on, my, on the earth, whatever you ask of the Father, that my Father will do. So the, before the Lord shares this whole parable, the Lord talks about praying together with our brothers and sisters, even pursuing the Lord together with our brothers and sisters. You know, if we have, if we're holding on to that hundred denarii, if we're holding on to that one little offense, one little, you know, problem, one little frustration, how could we possibly pursue the Lord together in a good way? How could we possibly um, uh, enjoy God together, pursue Christ with one another? How could we pray together, have the, that prayer in harmony that the Lord was talking about in verses 19 through 20? Okay. Um, you know, we're all fellow slaves. We're all serving the same master. We all... Uh, and, and, and in order, you know, if we're going to glorify our master, if we're going to have harmonious service to our master, we need to learn to let go of that 100 denarii. We need to learn to just forget about it just for the sake that God might have his glory among a group of people on the earth. You know, the Christian life is not a, an individual life. The Christian life is not just about us pursuing God 
doing good, good works on our own, but it's about us all together glorifying God in our daily living with one another. It's about, it's about us uh, praying together in harmony in twos and threes. It's about us pursuing Christ together in his word. It's about us having group fellowship, um, group prayer. You know, that's the, that's the most wonderful and, 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 and enjoyable. And that's the part of the Christian life that God has the most delight in. The corporate aspect, the group aspect. If we hold on to that hundred denarii, we're going to lose that. We're going to lose that corporate enjoyment. We're going to lose that. It's, so it's really not worth it. It's not worth it to, to hold on to that hundred denarii. It's not worth it to lose how much we could enjoy God in group fellowship, in group prayer over, you know, that one thing that brother said to you. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Actually, in fact, that brother might have a portion of Christ or an experience of God that you need. He might have something that could really refresh you, really water you, really shepherd you, really, you know, be exactly what maybe something you're struggling with. You don't even know that brother could have that an experience of God that could hit that exact spot that you need. If we let, if we hold on to that hundred denarii, we're going to lose that. That hundred denarii, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's not worth it. It's not, it's, it's not worth for, uh, giving up all that we would gain in return. So brothers and sisters, you know, my spirit, my, my heart towards you all and towards us all is that we're all sinners. We all make mistakes. Let's learn to forgive one another. Let's learn to, in, to, to just stay in God's house, have a harmonious relationship in God's house so that we can enjoy God together, so we can lay hold of Jesus Christ together, so we could go on and pursuing the Lord, praying together in harmony for God's will to be done on this earth. Let's forget about our differences, put it aside, and let's enjoy the Lord together. Thank you.